Buenas tardes, les damos la, la bienvenida a la décima edición del ciclo de charlas del simposio de magnetismo en sistemas culturales. Sean todas y todos bienvenidos, sean todos bienvenidos. Soy Luis Rebori, miembro del, del grupo de este simposio, y hoy me toca el honor de ser el moderador de esta charla. Esta actividad se nos ocurrió cuando comenzamos nos a principios de año las actividades del simposio para, para compartir conocimientos, experiencia y bueno, hemos llegado a este lugar eh, gracias al apoyo de los participantes a la Comisión de Exploración del IOPG, que nos invitó a, a través de esta plataforma y al auspicio de las compañías que lo hacen posible, a las que le agradecemos el esfuerzo. Este simposio es parte de uno de los tantos eh, que formará parte del décimo primer conecto que tendrá lugar en Mendoza en noviembre de 2022. Y para aquellos que se perdieron algunas de las charlas anteriores, así como todas las de la Comisión de Exploración, están disponibles en el canal de YouTube, así que ahí las pueden ver. Les avisamos que eh, en la próxima charla, la décimo primera, tendrá lugar el 10 de diciembre, en el en este mismo horario, y en, este, en esa ocasión serán los presentadores Nicolás Schofield, de la Universidad de Aberdeen y Craig McGee, de la Universidad de Leeds, ambos de Inglaterra. Eh, les recomendamos, como han estado viendo en, en la en live antes de comenzar, este, cómo es el procedimiento para hacer la, las preguntas que serán respondidas al final de la charla, en este caso es una presentación de tres eh, oradores y pueden acceder a hacer preguntas al, al, al vínculo que es PIR y decirle que envían la pregunta a todos. De todos modos, si alguien quiere hacer alguna aclaración este, oral sobre una de las respuestas o bueno, ese tipo de participación, hay una manito para hacer, este, para indicar que se quiere hacer de esa forma. Y lo que sí le pedimos es que después las expliquen, las desliguen para no indicar que quieren hacer. Eh, el título de la charla del día es A Typical English in the Target Petroleum System of the Parnaíba Base in Brasil. Les cuento, antes de introducir a los oradores, que varios de los miembros de este simposio conocimos a los oradores hace exactamente un año cuando se desarrollaban las sesiones de la C6, la Colipsil Sandiques and Dikes, en Malargo. Y bueno, en este momento eh, comenzará la charla Diego Micheleón, que es geólogo de la Universidad del Estado de Sao Paulo, y actualmente está realizando una maestría en la Universidad del Estado de Río de Janeiro. Diego es gerente de exploración de Neva y desarrolla sus actividades en las cuencas paleozoicas del Oxford de Brasil. Eh, todos los colegas que participan esta tarde son de esa empresa Neva, y bueno, para que sepan, es una empresa privada, generadora de energía, que genera electricidad a partir de la producción de su propio gas natural de sus campos. Luego de Diego, hará, participará Fernando Aragón, geólogo de la Universidad del Estado de Río de Janeiro, y está regresando su maestría en esa misma casa de altos estudios. Fernando, geólogo senior de la empresa, y está en el mismo equipo de cuentas pelosotas. Y por último, Enrique López, que es graduado como geólogo de la Universidad Federal de Brasilia, y está haciendo su maestría en esa misma universidad. Y es geólogo de exploración del mismo equipo. Este, bueno, a continuación le paso, el, le damos el control a, a Diego para que inicie su presentación. Okay. So, please thank you for the introduction. I will conduct from here in English, please. Uh, excuse me to do it in English and uh, I will share my PowerPoint with you. Please let me know if you were seeing the PowerPoint. Yes. 
Sí, 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 está, está todo bien. Todo joy. Ok, ok. So, as mentioned before, uh, we are from Eneva, this company in Brazil, uh, producing power electricity from the gas production. And we were, we're going to talk a little bit about this basin that all the gas and all the hydrocarbon came from. So now, uh, in, a, in a few weeks ago, I was uh, uh, upgraded as a manager of the exploration. It's a, it's a, it's a huge uh, challenge. And my master's actually was defended today. So I will share with you uh, some results in this talk. So uh, thank you for, for the opportunity. And let's try to discuss a little bit about this very interesting. My part of this talk, as mentioned, as mentioned before, we're going to be this first regional overview is a bit uh, of the LASI uh, uh, that was uh, presented in 2019. And Fernando, we're going to talk the second part of the typical petroleum system. And, and Enrique, we're going to conclude with the hydrothermalism and reservoir rocks uh, in the end of the presentation. So um, as an introduction, a brief introduction, we we're going to talk, of course, with magmatism. And, and to talk about magmatism, probably uh, all of you know very well this picture, and it's, it's a very used, very known uh, part of this uh, LAPs uh, are in Brazil. One of them is the Camp Central Atlantic Margin Province, and other one is the uh, Paraná and Deca. And we are probably in Parnaíba Basin, that is in the northeast of Brazil, more or less over here. I will show you uh, later on. Uh, we are affected by both of them. And uh, in red over here, we can see the outline of the Parnaíba Basin. And just uh, some highlights of Parnaíba Basin is an, an intracartonic basin located in the northeast of the north of Brazil. Uh, it's, it reaches more than 600,000 square kilometers, more than uh, three, three, three and a half uh, thousand meters of depth in the depot center. So uh, could you reach more than this? Uh, there are five super sequences, and we're going to see these sequences uh, in a ge geological session and also in a seismic view. As I said, two magmatic events uh, are considered so far, and three major structural lineaments, uh, Trans-Brazilian, the, the Marajó Parnaíba, and the Pico Santa Inês, that is the... the the main one over here in the basement of the basin. Uh, so this is more or less uh, according to the Pico Santinese lineament. So we are seeing over here a map of, of the uh, uh, basement of the basin. This is the depot center of the basin. And let's see this, uh, the, the code colors, of course, are the, the deeper part and we are going here to the shallow part. And in the depot center of the basin, we have the, the park of hawks that are our production fields. So let's see a section exactly crossing uh, all, the, all the basin from west to east. And we have some wells uh, as an example of this section. This is a section, a geological section based on wells. And we can see all the five super sequences that I mentioned before. The pink is the basement. We can see some rift sections that are just, just light brown. Uh, the Silurium, the position sequence. Also the uh, Middle Devonian and Low Carboniferous, that is the, the, where we have all the major uh, source rock and the reservoirs that we are producing so far. Uh, 
also the the upper cretaceous the, the upper carboniferous and the lower triassic in a light blue and the jurassic triassic uh, the, the jurassic cretaceous uh, uh sequence in the top of this uh this geological section all the dots in this in this section black are oil shows and white are gas shows so we can see that the interaction of the petroleum system with with the uh, magma events are really interesting uh, or the other my colleagues are going to talk more about this but i can mention that uh, we need to have the, 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 this interaction because it's exactly what we call a typical petroleum system. In another uh, point of view, this is a magnetic map uh, where we can see in the light lines over here are the seismic lines. Believe it or not, we don't have many, many, many seismic lines. These are all the seismic lines that we have in the basin. Uh, most of them, of course, are crossing the gas fields and the main exploratory area that we have in the depot center of the basin. Some of them uh, around these areas, but as you can see, the, the basin by itself is a bit underexplored. And uh, as we see, there are some very interesting uh, preferential directions that we can see. And as I mentioned, uh, the, the red, uh, the green uh, features over here are the fields. The yellow are, the, are some of the wells. And we see that these uh, directions are crossing these this, uh, this gas fields. So there is a, a control of the the structural framework and is something uh, important to understand if we, uh, in order to understand the petroleum system of the basin, because all the petroleum system is based on this uh, emplacement of the magma. In a seismic view, it's pretty similar to the geological section, and we see that the same sections, uh, at exactly the same colors, I, I mentioned that uh, this, this was pre present today in my talk, uh, in my master's. So, rift section, Silurian, uh, uh, Devonian, Carboniferous, and we see that uh, the reservoir that I mentioned before is over here on, in this section. Also, the, the, the source rock, Fernando will go and stress a bit about this, and we see that uh, all the red features that are the dolerite seals are in place, most of them on this uh, sequence. So this is uh, why we are studying so many this this, this kind of, uh, uh, th that's why we are interested on this emplacement of the, of the, of these events. And to understand it, of course, that we need to, to have an idea about mechan mechanisms of the emplacement, and many scientists uh, studied, uh, of course, that there are different uh, uh, views of, about, about the emplacement, but in, in general, uh, the emplacement happened like a f fingers, and these fingers just enter in the in the in the sediments and in, in the strata, and we can see that as a flow system, the the, the pump of this this system we're gonna have a a complete uh, 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 right to uh, uh, shit. Uh, going and moving as a uh, as a flow in, inside the strata. So, uh, but all, all of these fingers uh, are uh, the source came from somewhere, right? And could came from a single batch or 
uh, multiple batches. And this is really important to understand. It's difficult to see in the seismic uh, perspective or interpret it because it's a vertical feature. And of course, that will going to be uh, limited by the, the, the presence of the dolerite seals in place. So the vertical uh, features are going to be a challenge to, to be mapped. And m most uh, uh, of the interpretation are going to be on the saucer shapes. And also the, the saucer shapes needs to be understood and, and we need to have an idea about where it came from. So in the past, uh, it was thought that this saucer shape uh, was uh, one way and then uh, they upgraded as a f most uh, a more feeder feeder dicks uh, feeder dikes uh, uh, as a source, and now we we have an injection point as a, a unique source to uh, to 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 have these transgressive igneous extrusions, and this is modeled, is very known, and and we can see that. Uh, the emplacement of the saucer shape is very, very known nowadays. And in our base, in the trap by itself is uh, the concept by the trap is like this: uh, one, saucer, one saucer shape uh, against other saucer shape. We're gonna have a structure and a trap ready to to have uh, uh, an accumulation. And that's why we need to understand all the process and all the emplacement involved in the in the process. That is this is a, a, another seismic line in time uh, to exemplify the, the igneous intrusions in the gas field, one of the most important that we have. And as I said, it's difficult to to see these vertical dikes, but we can associate it. Uh, with the folds, for example, and as I said, also the feature of the sheet of the intrusion uh, due to the uh, thickness, we're going to be like just one. Uh, we know that there are many saucer shapes together, but we see in the end just one feature uh, crossing the strata. Uh, Many authors uh, have tried to, to, to estimate the volume of the basing and the, 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 emplaced, the emplaced magma in the basins. Uh, Brazil has uh, three huge intra, intra cratonic basins. Uh, actually, uh, these two are together. So we have Solimões and Amazonas, Parnaíba that we are talking about, and Paraná, and, and this Huge basins have these important uh, uh, magma flows inside the basin. So uh, that's why some authors are trying to, to, to estimate volume of magma emplacements inside the basin. And I am one of them, uh, try to estimate uh, volume inside Parnaíba Basin using data wells. Uh, information, and this is my uh, calculation to the to the Parnaíba basement emplacement until the Devonian uh, sequence. And to finish my 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 part of the talk, uh, I've present today the the first uh, high resolution uh, geochronology uh, analysis. In a, in a subsurface sample in the Parnaiba Basin. So this is a, a, a technology done in, in, in a sample in 2,900 meters of depth and with, uh, with reach the 201 million of years. So uh, fitting with the camp age. Hi everyone, uh, Fernando Aragon speaking, so I will continue with the presentation. 
So as uh, Diogo said, we, in, Par in Parnaíba we have this particular characteristic that is the these two magmatic events that we have in Basin. So this is a complexity, it's more com complex for the, uh, the petroleum system. Uh, but here, uh, just to talk more about the source rock in the, this uh, system, petroleum system, we have, there are four source rocks in the basin. Uh, one called off formation from Cretaceous, Longa formation, uh, Pimentators, and Tiangua formation, the Tiangua formation in the Siduria. Uh, but here in Paraíba, the main one is the, the Pimentators formation due to the, 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 uh, its better quality of uh, source rock. So this uh, formation here is uh, a, a cross section with uh, basin on, on wells. And we, as we can see, the Pimentel's formation reached just uh, the, the highest depth, uh, deepest depth is, uh, is approximately uh, 200, uh, 2,500 meters. So it didn't reach uh, a sufficient uh, overburden to thermal maturation. So that's why we need uh, an extra uh, uh, an extra heat for the, the thermal maturation the maturation for the source rock, uh, and that's that's why we call we the the petroleum season as a typical. Uh, it, it's the proven one in the basin. So we have all the our accumulations associated with this. Uh, kind of this type of petroleum system where we have the source rock maturation uh, triggered by the seals inside it, and uh, and we have the formation of the traps uh, associated and the sealing of the structure associated with these uh, seal intrusions and the migration. We have uh, some insights and uh, characteristics that lead us to, to to think about the migration as well. So here, to evaluate more, uh, I, I, we uh, use more uh, well data to, uh, to, to do the pyrology and TOC vitronite reflection that uh, we have in the, in the area, uh, size interpretation and rock description. And uh, we, we just to, firstly, it, we have an overview about the primitive formation. So the, this formation is mainly composed by shales and siltstone and uh, some uh, thin layers of sand, so uh, in, in, in interlaminated sand. And uh, it's best characteri characterized by Rodriguez, 1995, where it's subdivided into four source intervals, main source intervals that we call D, C, B, and A. So uh, the type of this, uh, this uh, organic matter is mainly two, type two and three. When we, we do the, the analysis using the Van Kerbelin and the, the, the hydrogen index. And the main one among the, all these source intervals is the C, the, what, what we call the source interval C. Due to, to the thickness that is reach a maximum of 37 meters, and the TOC, that is at a maximum of 5.2%. And as we can see in this map, that's the thickness map of, for this interval using wells, all these dots, black dots are the wells. I, I know that we don't have uh, some, some areas, we don't have wells to, to calibrate it, but its shape of the, 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 the map, it's really correlated to the main uh, structural features of the base, northwest, uh, peak Sentinels and Northeast uh, Trans-Brazilian uh, Lineament. So it's, it's kind of nice interest uh, uh, shape. So now to talk about more about, uh, about the, the maturation and thermal effect. Uh, regardless that we have uh, just a few vitronite reflectors data, we can make some assumptions and here try to make a map to see in map uh, this TOC. And, uh, and uh, sorry, these vitronite reflectors, and we can see that uh, the, here is the, the the map for the each source interval, so A, uh, B, C, and D, and we can see that in the area of the gas fields, we have these vitronite reflectors uh, mainly higher than two percent or close to two percent. So it's the the gas window, and uh, when we go to northwest, we have 
uh, less than one or reaching one percent of vitronite reflecting. So this uh, already uh, put a sign for us, alarm, that we have more uh, chance to have oil accumulation northwest. That's really correlated with what we see in these wells. We're going to see uh, more ahead. Uh, and continuous evaluation, we can integ we integrate uh, well logs, the interpretation of well logs and sidewall course to define these thermally uh, altered zones. And uh, we can see we mainly we use the, the resistivity log because it's better we uh, call our attention about this anomalously low uh, resistivity inside, for example, in the in the column of gas. Here's the gas water contact in blue, and uh, out of this this gas column, and we can see also the the density log here uh, close to the seals. Close to the seal, we can see the lower porosity associated with the interpretation of these logs. Uh, uh, showing the, the mechanical, the physical alteration that this this uh, seals, this heat, intense heat, can provo uh, promote here close to the seals. But we have to keep in mind uh, all, uh, that this the thermal effect is higher than these zones probably. So it's just uh, this uh, anomalous resistivity call attention for this uh, characteristic of the thermal effect. And uh, and we can see in the the the, 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 the sidewall cores also this constant highest concentration of pyrite. That is that's why we have this uh, anomalous anomalous uh, lower resistivity also. So this to call attention for this characteristic of the the, the thermal effect in these uh, all these zones. And when we see in the other uh, in other sidewall cores, we can see the pyrite concentrated and laminated and uh, and disseminated in the in the, the the rock, and also filling fractures like this one that we have uh, here, and also bitumen, in some bitumen in, in, the, in the fractures. And uh, to to try to to uh, see like a. To, to see more about this this effect and quantify, we we, we made some uh, correlations and we get that the the thickness of these thermally affected zones can reach one or 1.5 the the thickness of the seal itself. So here uh, we have sometimes we have less than this, but I, it's we have to think that's really correlated with the lithology, the type of lithology, the permeability. So here we have uh, above uh, above the seal, we, uh, below the seal we have some more sandstone. So probably the dissipation of heat is really high, much higher, and we have less uh, physical alteration, mechanical alteration. So have other uh, uh, characteristics and properties that we have to think to to make a better uh, interpretation. So now uh, talking more about the generation migration. The, on the sidewall cores, we, we saw some really interesting uh, features like these uh, fract fractures, parallel bedding parallel fractures in the most rich, organic rich layers. So this call our attention for the, 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 this, this interpretation integrated with the logs and with the, the, the sidewall cores, the rocket the description showing the the influence of this thermal um, heat from the database, where we have like these other examples from this like this in from Vaca Muerta, where we see these brief fractures as it's called, uh, showing this characteristic close to the organic rich uh, layers, and this is very it's very important to to support the idea that these are the most uh, uh, mature intervals and and where we can uh, count on more in the, the generation of hydrocarbons and expulsion because these must be the, the, the most uh, overpressure zones where we will have the fractures and the expulsion of these hydrocarbons from the source. So here is a good example where we have these layers with concentration of organic uh, matter and the generation and 
start to have this B fractures uh, and expulsion of these uh, hydrocarbons, and we have the sandstones with uh, subvertical vertical fractures making the migration. So it's, it's, uh, it's, we think that this happens here also. And now to, just to, to, to synthesize or to, to finish the, the interpretation, I will show some scenarios of the exploration here, uh, real cases that we can apply this, this, this concept. So there's something that the two effects that is really important to understand uh, in our point of view is that one of these them is the total thickness, thickness of the intrusions inside the source. The number and the thickness is really it really matters for the for the the, the interpretation. So here the idea is to follow this map is the total thickness map. So here all the seals are uh, was some and and put in map in all these wells in the through the basin to have this idea where we have more seals and where we don't have seals. And here is just the graph of wells and showing that the this total thickness that they used to to make the map. Okay. And starting with these wells more to the edge of the, the basin we can see that we have just few a uh, few wells with some seals close uh, less than 50 meters of seals and others we don't have seals and the in these wells in this well we, we saw just few oil shows or no hydrocarbons so the material the, the source is immature here probably and uh, when we go more to the like a transition zone we we, we we start to see some wells with more seals inside the source and we have more oil shows, not different from the other wells, more to the edge. Here we have more volume of generation. So we have more maturation, we have more uh, influence of this heat. And when we go to the, the area of the gas fields, we have the wet to dry gas accumulation. The main gas field here concentrated and related to 150 to 200 uh, meters of total seals inside the source rock. Here we have the, uh, a huge, uh, huge concentration of volumes being generated and, and fractures and exposure of gas. And when in, in some places where in the map you can see that reach more than 200 and, uh, meters of seal, seals, we have the, the cases where we just see some few gas shows or no hydrocarbons, but here no hydrocarbons probably is uh, associated with the mature source rock. And the uh, yeah, beside this fact, what uh, what are this, the other point that we have to keep in mention is the emplacement depth inside the source rock because. It, I will show three scenarios here, and now I will show the, the scenarios that we can see this sensibility of this kind of petroleum system. The first case is the oil and gas accumulation. Uh, the, in this case, the seals are concentrated, uh, is a well that we drill in the area, and the, here the seals are concentrated in the upper part of the pimentero formation, the source rock. The, you can see that the uh, source intervals are, are, are deeper than, and more di and distant from the seals. And here in this case, we have the, the maturation for gas close to the seals, uh, uh, reaching more than 1.2% of vitronite. And when we go uh, far from the seals, we have the 0 0.5, 0 0.7 uh, vitronite reflection, and the oil shows, the main oil shows in the, the, the area. Here is the gas total gas show that we register in the, the, the drilling. So you can see that the, the concentration of gas is, in, is close to the seals. And, uh, uh, and this, as, as we have this kind of uh, framework of seals inside the source, it, 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 it acts like a barrier and we have all this gas uh, trapped here in the side of the source rock, probably it can uh, even uh, migrate for, uh, from out of this area, but here is very concentrated in the shales and the delaminated sandstones. The second case is the dust gas accumulation case. Here, if you if you see, 
you can you can observe that we have the the same amount of seals that we had in the first case, but here the seals are are, are different depth of uh, inside the source rock and almost putting all the source intervals inside the gas window. So this is the the sensibility that I was talking about that we can see in the modeling as well. Here I, I didn't bring uh, any modeling, but we can see this in the modeling, and uh, the, the different depth put all the, the source rock inside the gas window here, reaching up to 1.9% of atonite. And this caused much higher volume of generation and, and, and charge for the, 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 uh, the, the probably migration from the source rock being fracturated and being higher over pressure uh, and make this uh, this a uh, great uh, good saturation of gas to migrate it. this here this seal here up uh, uh, shallow seal it's the the seal that makes the the trap and the seal for accumulation here is a, a case of gas field uh, of our uh, company so here we have this kind of scenario and the last one is the dry structure that I call it there because it's the the case of over mature or liquid uh, structure here. We have much more seals inside the source rock uh, with different emplacement depth. And here we have much higher vital and reflection going up to more than 3%. So the heat here is too intense that we can probably uh, degrade it and, and, and put all the organic matter to the, uh, to the extensive uh, uh, maturation. So here we have in the wells just few gas shows. Uh, sometimes we can see uh, some gas inside some sandstone trapped by the the, the, the shales. Just few gas shows a, a shallower probably because of this uh, stress on the the source rock and leak of the the uh, just a few gas from the source. So these are this. We know that there are more uh, uh, important facts, uh, characteristics that we have mentioned. We have to take in mind, and we have to figure out when we talk about that cooperative system. But here, I would like to just point out uh, these two: the total thickness of intrusion and the placement depth inside the source that make good difference. What we we're going to see in the, the exploration. Now, Enrique will talk more, uh, and we can pass to you, Enrique, so you can assume. Okay, so as I'm not with his delivery of you, I will ask you to, to pass the slide for me. Okay. And uh, so, buenas tardes a todos. I'm going to present the, the third and last part of this presentation, and this is the POC version of my master dissertation. And uh, and this was about the influence of thickness intrusions on reservoir rocks by means of hydrothermal fluid migration and how it affects the hydrocarbon exploration. So what we know by now, as uh, we have previously talked, uh, we know that the igneous intrusions trigger and control the hydrocarbon generation, as Fernando has said has stressed it out, and uh, the great, and this uh, is caused by the great volume of intrusive igneous rocks that uh, Diogo has presented, and and this uh, and the igneous intrusions also play an important role as they are the main field and trap structures, as you can see here in this uh, seismic line and this cartoon in which we have the the five main. Uh, petroleum proved petroleum systems in the basin. So now we are going to move to the effects of the igneous intrusion on reservoir rocks. Fast for me, please. So here in this uh, in this cartoon, in this schematic cartoon, we can uh, this is illustrate uh, the influence of igneous intrusions on a convention petroleum system. On the upper part, we have the convention petroleum system with uh, hydrocarbon, accumula hydrocarbon accumulation. 
and how and in the figure below we have how the the unit intrusions uh, may affect each of the the garden system elements. So I'm going to focus on the reservoir rock, so you can pass for me. So the first uh, effect that I'm going to talk, talk about is the first reservoir comp compartmentalization in which the igneous intrusions may separate and then isolate one from, from another. And it might also occur inside a reservoir. So it's a reservoir itself compartmentalization. So you can pass for me. And the second effect is that it may create or reactivate fluid migration media. They may uh, breach a trap, a, a trap that was previously formed, and it also may generate new uh, fluid migration media that I'm going to show you uh, later on. So, and the last effect are the contact metamorphism real that uh, is it's caused by the heat transfer from the igneous intrusions to the reservoir wall. Uh, here I have separated number three and four because I'm, uh, I'd like to stress out like, uh, that the effects associated with contact metamorphism would be more... Uh, Enrique, lo que estaban comentando es que se escucha un poco bajo. Gracias. Ahora está mejor. ¿no? Sí, ahora se escucha mejor. Gracias. Aló. Sí, sí. So I was talking about, uh, can you go to the previous slide, please? Uh, so I was talking about uh, the difference from contact metamorphism and, uh, and the effects of the hydrothermal fluid migration, in which the contact metamorphism uh, real reactions will be more uh, due to heat transfer for conduction. And uh, the effects of uh, lower temperature would be more associated with uh, di uh, Diagen is induced by hydrothermal fluid migration associated with uh, convective fluid flow. So, can go forward, please. So, uh, all of the samples that I have studied are were sampled from uh, well core uh, 30, uh, 337 uh, meter long well core collected on the the central east part of the basin, which is located approximately 200, 200, 250 kilometers from the main gas, field, gas fields and basin depot center. So can you pass, please? Okay, so now uh, this is uh, the location of the well and the, the well itself. So the well drilled for uh, 30 meters or a uh, course dollar right at the bottom. So we not have uh, trespassed it, have crossed it. And there are uh, four, uh, no, you can just make a stop, please. Go back, go back please. <laughs> You're giving a spoiler. Uh, so there are the four seas left in uh, this meter thick intruding the Nogar formation, which is at, at the bottom of the of the well, which is composed mainly by atherolytic sediments, and they are covered by the Potsy formation, which is the main uh, reservoir rocks of the Paranaiba Basin, and is composed of six transgressive regressive cycles of sandstone layers that thicken to the top. 
that take us to the top. Uh, now we're going to travel up uh, in the well cove. Uh, following this graphic on the left are the gamma ray in black, the receiving in red. And on the right, on the right side, you have the porosity and permeability in blue and green, respectively. So we can see here that the sandstone bar is taken into the top, and the, the porosity and permeability increase into the top. And at the very top here, uh, above uh, 760 meters, we can see that the porosity and permeability uh, parameters increase a lot, and this is due to teledigenous reactions. So I have not considered the PLE formation uh, uh, pathogenesis on the on my results, as they were uh, later affected by teledigenesis. So we can move on, please. So here. Uh, uh, in the place that the, the well is located, we would expect uh, a temperature of uh, due to normal water diagenesis lower than 800 uh, Celsius degrees, considering uh, a local boreal depth of maximum two kilometers, a geothermal uh, gradient of 27 uh, Celsius degrees per kilometer, and a surface temperature of 25. And, uh, Celsius degrees. So we have the the well here projected in this in this section from the literature. So you can see that the basement is very shallow here. So we would not expect uh, great uh, depths and temperatures associated with this sediments. And I have analyzed only the very top of it. So if I have considered two kilometers, I consider a, a thick uh, erosion removal here. So move on, please. So what we have here in the left is the main diagenetic uh, products that we have uh, reported that uh, really matches that, uh, that temperature and that uh, normal burial depth that I have uh, showed in, in the previous slide. So what I, what I would like to stress out here is that uh, the, the main diagenetic uh, products that is described in the lab in the literature are very different from what I have uh, seen in my samples, and uh, they are listed here uh, on the right side, on the right hand side, and on the, the very right here, the very right right hand, I have the col uh, the columns. Uh, the stratigraphic column here with the, the main uh, diagenetic products that we have. In light blue is calcite, and uh, dark blue are uh, albite, in yellow is pyrite, in green chlorite, and in, in red are uh, hydrofractured, hydrofractured structures. So what uh, are the explanation for for this uh, change in Gen X product, uh, products. Uh, as in normal water diagenesis, uh, the bulk mineral composition should, not, should remain nearly the same due to living poor water flow, and diagenetic reactions occur due to the long term temperature increase, which, uh, which makes that uh, I should uh, have seen the, same, the very same uh, bulk mineral composition that I have. Uh, found in the literature, but this is not uh, this is also not what happened. So the sediments that I have studied may have uh, suffered some influence from the the hydrothermalism triggered by the igneous intrusions that have caused uh, the high pole water fluid migration that may have caused the mass transfer the mass transfer that. Uh, would provide the, the elements for the book mineral composition change. So now I'm going to show some of the photographic evidence of it and some isotopic results. So here I have an anomalous content of chloride. I have this sandstone here. This is a Kenscan uh, false image color, which the chloride is highlighted in the, in green. And uh, we can see here that the chloride is the main 
uh, for clothing mineral. Can I move on, please? And you can see here, uh, I focus on, on, this, on this red rectangle here, that the chlorides uh, pretty much fills uh, all, all the pores uh, of this sandstone, and I also uh, have corroded uh, framework parts or a previous uh, react or have filled this corroded part. So move on, please. Move on. So the albite occurs as overgrowth on k spot grains and as microcrystalline albite. And the microcrystalline albite, uh, we can see both of these examples here in this in this photo in which we have the, you can move on please. Diego, oh yeah. So here we can see on the very center, a little slightly to the bottom uh, from the center, uh, very well formed overgrowth of albite on a uh, k field for grain. And we, you can move on please. And here, the very same uh, mudstone, uh, mudstone fragment uh, replaced by, by albite. And here in this Kenston uh, false image color, you can see the K-Fills bar in, in red. Uh, they are surrounded by uh, overgrowth of albite as well. And again, uh, on the very right, uh, in the stratigraphic column, you can see how they occur. Uh, they are very spread all over the the very sedimentary succession from the from the contact with the igneous uh, intrusions up to the, the top of it. And move on, please. So now I'm going to talk uh, the stable isotope things, uh, fingerprints that I have studied. So I have sample um, calcite and pyrite in the igneous rocks. Firstly, I'll talk about the sulfur isotope fingerprints. So we, here I have two samples collected in the igneous intrusions that have plotted uh, very, uh, very well, uh, um, have matched with the literature data that we have in this uh, green cluster here. So you can assume that this is uh, an igneous rock signature in the sulfur isotope. Can move on, please? So, and as I have also analyzed pyrites all over the, the sedimentary succession, and they occur as sediments and, and veins, as you can see on, on the left side, and they have plotted uh, uh, around minus 10 to, to, my, to, to plus 12, Per, uh, per thousand, uh, and uh, we, here on the on the left hand side we have the then the variant of the you know, that is described in the literature that is the sulfides uh, precipitated during the late Devonian Mississippi, and on the right hand side we have the the thermochemical reduction of these uh, sulfides from bacteria, so thermochemical reduction from, from, from the pyrite previous forming. Sorry. And so they have plotted uh, in the between of them, so they are not correlated 100% with them. So can we go on, please? So when you plot all the samples here, we can see that we have a major magmatic contribution for the sulfur isotopes that uh, nearly control uh, this sulfur uh, isotope signature here in, in the center of the of this this graphic, and uh, we have a minor composition of from these rocks on the thermochemical reduction of sulfates, which are described in the literature that uh, although they are very located described, it, but there is some uh, sulfate, so there might be a source for for this more positive signature, and the other. Oh, and on the other side, the contribution from the bacteria reduction of marine sulfates here 
associated with the, the period of the position of the late people in the system. So what we have here is that we have a magmatic main, a major contribution to magmatic source. Can move on, please? So now moving to the calcites, uh, I have the calcites are more restricted to to the portion to to the portions close to the igneous intrusions, which are highlighted here in, in the with this uh, light blue circles here on the right. So they occur as cements and uh, in sandstones and in veins, as I have shown before, and in the igneous rocks. Uh, in red, that's the, the, the red dots here. Uh, they occur as uh, filling pesco, so forming amygdalites, and uh, as veins as well. So, move on, please. Focus only on the the carbon uh, fingerprint here. The carbon results they 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 plot in a very narrow range, which are all. Uh, negative, so there is no contribution from the, the protection or the Pantalassian uh, marine sediments, which are plotted in this uh, light blue and light green fields. And they all, uh, all the values are within the mental uh, carbon range of values. So once again, we have a major contribution from magnetic source for, uh, for the formation of this uh, calcite. So move on, please. So the main conclusion is that uh, the, the pyrite and calcite that I have seen in, uh, as one of the main digenetic processes here, they, are, they have uh, a magmatic or hydrothermal process. So it's the proof that uh, sediments were uh, under the influence of this hydrothermal fluid migration uh, away from that was triggered by the igneous intrusions. Can move on, please. So this uh, hydrothermal fluid migrations uh, occur in many forms, but they they flow um, through the the most permeable medias, which in, in the left side uh, is shown in uh, in our sub vertical veins, in which the the hydrothermal fluid migrate vertically. But it also has uh, horizontal uh, reactions with uh, the footfall and the and the hanging wall of uh, mudstones, and the very same reactions are seen in horizontal laminations of, uh, of sandstones and mudstones, in which you have um, uh, calcite, pyrite, microcrystalline albite, and chlorite uh, in sediment and sandstone layers with uh, a microcrystalline albite uh, rim around it uh, in direction of to the mudstones. Move on, please. So the other, uh, another uh, curious uh, way that this uh, hydrothermal fluid migration occurs is that they actually cause the fract uh, fractures uh, trans, uh, more specifically, hydrofractures, uh, transgressive fractures in very laminated sediments, which are seen here. So this is schematic uh, cartoon here in Figure D. You can see that the the, the main part, the, the the central part of these transgressive uh, structures are filled by uh, are filled by chloride here in the in the in the chem scan photo uh, image, and this also has this, uh, this aureole of reaction uh, towards the, the mudstone layers. And also you can see here is that this uh, transgressive structures may be uh, interconnected with other ones, so by microfractures in the, in the silk stone layers uh, in the middle. So this transgressive fractures may have increased uh, the vertical permeability uh, of these rocks that were once isolated by mudstone uh, lamination. So move on, please. So another uh, 
This one is just to, to talk about it. I don't pretend to explain how they are formed, but they are very curious. Uh, these are beef-like structures. I call it just beef like because it morphologically resembles the beef that are uh, beef structure that are uh, reported in, in many places all over the world. But the, the feeding of it is very different. This is filled by uh, iron oxides and chlorides, and uh, which are no, uh, and the normal feeding for beef like for beef structures are gypsum or calcite or quartz. So this may have uh, some connection with organic matter maturation that would expand these this, this spaces or the expansion of cold water in mudstones. I don't know, but it's just more of a report and curiosity here. So I'll move on, please. So the main conclusions are that uh, of my part is that the ignis intrusis induce mechanical and chemical changes on reservoir rocks via uh, hydrothermal fluid migration through the, the main uh, porous and permeable medias. So they cause a book composition change of the main pore of fluid minerals, as I, ha as I have uh, shown. And the, hydro, uh, and the mechanical effects are associated with the hydrofractures. And uh, the implications of it to the to the to the hydrocarbon exploration are that this, the presence of this hydrothermalism on reservoir rocks may decrease the reservoir quality, as uh, it causes the precipitation of the main pore of the mineral. Uh, it may cause reservoir compartmentalization if they they really occlude all all the all the pores and the permeability of these rocks. And may have some, also some implications for acid, acidification and stimulation process because they, you have to change the composition of your, the acid that you use and the, the amount of, of fluids. So it changes the bulk mineral composition. So uh, so and uh, and also have some implications for the fracking as uh, more uh, microstructures are formed, as I as I shown as an example of the transgressive hydrofractures. So move on, please, to the end. So the final conclusions are that the advances on the understanding of this apical petroleum system have resulted in the discovery of uh, faulty VCM. Uh, in the Panayu Basin, the Panayu Basin, so and uh, talk more specifically about the the results of Diogo Fernando and my master dissertation is that the great of the great volume of magma, including this sedimentary station, has put uh, source rock into gas and oil in these conditions depends on the ignis intrusion thickness and distance to the the boundary phase of the sedimentary formation. And that the ignis intruders have also generated hydrothermal fluid migration to the most permeable media that can really uh, mechanically affect reservoir rocks. And, the, and, the, and this um, may be, uh, must be considered in the hydrocarbon uh, exploration risks. And that's it. So move on. Final. Working. Gracias, obrigado, thank you. And uh, our greetings to the great loss for all the Latin American uh, football lovers that have lost Maradona yesterday. Thank you. Muito obrigado, muchas gracias, Fernando Enrique. Presentación, parabéns y obrigado por los detalles, por Julio Diego. Antes de comenzar las preguntas, las respuestas que les pedimos que les hagan en el idioma que quieran y nosotros si empezamos a los oradores, vamos a tener una pequeña y breve encuesta, así que eh, la van a empezar a ver ahora y se empiezan a responder y enseguida empezamos a, con las preguntas y respuestas. Vale.
Sí. Bueno, eh, yo le voy a dar la, hacer las preguntas, eh, esas pre las preguntas y ustedes deciden quién, quién va a responder. Algunos están destinatario. Eh, la primera pregunta es de nuestro colega Saulo para ir a Santos. How do you evaluate the synchronism risk related to magmatic bodies in placement captured first over the reservoir intervals and later inside the source rock packages? Have you heard from her? Uh, see, yeah, yes, yes, I've heard. I'm here, yeah. What's for that? Yeah, yes, you can, you can, can ask Luis. Eu fiz a a pergunta de Saulo, você disse. No, no, I didn't hear. Okay, how do you evaluate the synchronous risks related to magmatic bodies in placement, coming first of the reservoir intervals? And later inside the South Rock packages. Yeah, we, I'm I'm working uh, intensively on, in, uh, on this evaluation in my masters. I, unfortunately, I didn't bring anything of this. But what we are doing here is to test. We are testing the different emplacement uh, regarding the age. As we as we talk here, it's difficult to know uh, if the, for example, the cretaceous event and the uh, Jurassic event happening is happening in in our area here in the, the center north of the base. But what we are doing, we are testing uh, seals in placing. The first one is the deepest one. So the first one, for example, is the in the salt rock, as, as the question is. And uh, the last one is the reservoir one, the, the one that made the trap and the seals. And a lot of many cases we can calibrate the thermal history with the the, the vitronite. In this case, where we have the 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 seal that make the trap, it's the last one because the sensibility that the, the modeling shows that we have much short duration of this. Uh, the sensibility is too short of the triggering maturation and uh, the stress in the 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 the, the, the source rock and the migration. And in this time where the, you have the migration and this migration, this, uh, this hydrocarbons migrated from the source, reach the, the, the reservoir, shallow already the, the, the seals enter and make the trap. And in the modeling, we also can see sometimes that we have some gas, some hydrocarbons migrated, migrated before the, the entry of the, the, the seals this is in the trap, making the trap, and we have the later another uh, migration post that we have some volume trap in the seal where when it is crystallizing. So uh, the thing is, is this, that the sensibility you can have this kind of scenario. It's our opinion and what we are seeing here. So we can have this scenario where we have the first seal is the source one. And the last one is the is the the, the seal that make the trap. This assuming uh, a sequential seal interval like two uh, two hundred thousand million uh, thousand years, uh, twenty thousand years, uh, or ten thousand years, thirty thousand years. So between this uh, interval between the seals, you can have this this petrolatus season, as our opinion. Yeah, just compliments uh, for another answer uh, regarding the, the magmatic events. We have this problem that we have two magmatic events. So we have the, the Triassic one and the Cretaceous one. So we have this uh, very large uh, difference of age between this, these two igneous uh, events. And also we can, as Fernando has, has stressed out, we have some variations inside the, the very same uh, event. So, in, uh, in the in the camp event, for example, in the around 200 million years, 
we have a small variation of uh, that we are testing of uh, two, uh, 20,000 uh, years uh, to 30,000 years that uh, Fernando has uh, has talked about. And but we have tried to to put an end to this question, trying to collect zircons on on well on well samples, but we are not. Uh, successful to collect at the same time uh, igneous, uh, zircons in igneous intrusions on the reservoir rocks and in the source rock as uh, in the same well. So this question is still open by now. Okay. Uh, la próxima pregunta consulta es de Amin Villalba y es para Fernando. ¿Vos estás escuchando, Fernando? Eh, dice eso, es para vos, eh, Fernando. Dice: In case one, two, and three, where you show the R0 increase by the dolorite seal instruction, what methodology would you use it to measure it? Sorry, the, the measure which literature I measure what? Sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, sorry. It's the shale. It's the, the intervals in between those seals. Okay. We have just just few, just few analysis, but uh, we have some points with the well, that we measure the shale from the the these formation, the vitronite reflectance, and uh, some some uh, some uh, some measurements. It's uh, the most part of them. It's not. I, I didn't uh, follow the the measure, and I didn't follow the analysis. And uh, but I take a look in the, the the quality of the data, and some are good uh, measurements. So I think that it's quite good. A próxima para Diogo. Diogo, está escutando? Diogo, hay una, una pregunta de Ricardo Manoni. There are two different age of the instruction, upper Triassic and lower Cretaceous. Which one is responsible for the source rock maturation? Look, uh, I'm working as the proposal of my, my uh, thesis today was exactly uh, use this uh, high precision uh, geochronology to to prove that uh, as the only one in, in, in high precision uranium uh, uh, we have in subsurface samples uh, to 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 prove that the the, the magma emplacement that we have on the, uh, in subsurface is uh, Triassic Jurassic so. Uh, we need we need to have more. There are samples uh, uh, on progress to be dated in our in our samples, but so far the sample dated and 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 the, the sample that I have is dated as 200 million years. And as we know, the petroleum system is working. So uh, I I would say that. The generation and the maturation and all the trap and seal is happening because of the 200 million years event. Now, uh, Luis, just adding because another thing is that the, the correlation that we can see in the sometimes in the the, the oil and gas shows that we are just. Sometimes we we see the, the also that the hydrothermal vent goes to the the paleo surface paleo to, to, topography that uh, mention more to the Jurassic and Triassic event. So there are some insights, there are some uh, features in the, the seismic and the oil shows that we didn't uh, see uh, oil shows in shallower part of the basin and, and these kind of things lead us to think more about this 200 thing event. Okay. Uh, la próxima es de Ole Raven. You mentioned that your traps are formed by amalgamate seals. 
When you compare discoveries to dry wells, what makes the difference? If these amalgamated seals form efficient trap or not, do you see differences, for example, in fracturing? Luis, your comments? Jose, can you Could you go on? Could, could you repeat, please? Okay. Eu posso traduzir, Fernando. Tem, tem, não, tem não, tem não, aqui se quiser também ler a pergunta. Tem na direita do, do, do ah. da camada para facilitar. You mentioned that your traps are form, formed by amalgamated fields. When you compare discoveries to dry wells, what makes a difference if these amalgamated seals form efficient traps or not? Do you see differences, for example, in factoring? No, what we, if I understand the, the question, I, I, uh, what we can see in the, this, this scenario that we have um, amalgamated seals and lost uh, seal bodies inside the source rock, and the relation with the dry wells is a more fault uh, seismic features we, in the seismic lines in, in, in across this area we can see more fractures uh, more faults and in the the, the samples uh, i didn't uh, uh, i didn't analyze much uh, samples from this area but that area in the scenario that we we we, we Correlate with the dry well, we can see more faults and these kind of shallow uh, gas shows or oil show, more gas shows because we have the, the maturation triggered all, 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 all of the source for gas. And we can see in the shallow part some, just some few gas shows. And uh, the seismic lines is sometimes very uh, chaotic uh, seismic faces. Uh, that we attribute for uh, a more, uh, probably more fractured and more faulted uh, uh, layer of the, the pigmentarious formation, the source. And just to complement uh, Fernando's answer, uh, we don't have very detailed analysis on the on the sea intrusions that work as, as traps, like uh, petrography or anything like that, like to see the, uh, some of any further detail. And we have some accumulations with fractures at the very top of the, of the trap structures and that, that are filled with gas. So as Fernando has mentioned, fractures could, can, can open a structure, but uh, its presence does not prevent uh, the structure to have some uh, hydrocarbon accumulation. One of, the main, uh, one, oh, of the main, one of the main parameters that, that, we, that we can see uh, in dry wells to, to, to wells with uh, hydrocarbon accumulation is, uh, is the thickness of the, the ignition intrusions that trap and uh, seal the hydrocarbon accumulation. So if they are very thin, uh, the less probable to likely to find uh, hydrocarbon accumulation. If they are thick, you have more chances to find them. I, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now I, I saw the, the, the question here. I think I can add more things to, to it. Uh, the, the other thing is that, that some wells, we can see even gas shows inside the seal uh, that is inside the source. And that we have this kind of uh, inside of the passage, the, 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 the migration of gas. And the trap is, is, is kind of a challenge because sometimes in, in the seismic lines, we can see in the edge of the structure that m probably uh, we would put a more uh, critical point uh, for the, the closure of the, the, clo uh, the close of the structure because of the, the seismic faces. But when we drill, we, we have the, the accumulation. So uh, this is kind of a challenge uh, uh, of, I think, that more processment and the, of the seismic and, and the acquisition that we are trying to evolve in this. So uh, I think that probably I, most, most of our interpretation is, re, uh, is led by the, the geometry also of the, 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 the the intrusion and the correlation, because we have here in the basin the main one main 
so uh, when main seal that make uh, most of the our traps that have 150 in, in average of thickness and uh, it's a good trap this our uh, confident trap that we have more confidence uh, more trust in this trap so we try to correlate always uh, these seals where we go when we go uh, far from the, the gas fields try to find it these seals because we know that is a good seal and trap for the, the, the accumulations Luis, you are muted. Agora sim, não estava funcionando. Ok, desculpa. É uma pergunta de Carlos Cruz. Sim, sí, sim. Sí. Diz que... Thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. Can you tell us, please, which is the average daily gas production per well and the AUR of the fields? Yes. Uh, well, the sandstone uh, that we our mainly production came from is a very good sandstone in terms of permaporosity. So I would say that uh, in average we have a daily production from 3,000 uh, uh, meters, uh, 3,300,000 meters cubic to 500,000 meters cubic per day. Uh, because we we have a limitation and our our fields have an agency uh, uh, didn't allow us to produce a lot per well. So, uh, but uh, the AOF of some fields could reach uh, six million of cubic meters. Uh, uh, of, of gas production in, in, in an absolute open flow. And the, the, the recovery, uh, we are still producing our first field, so we don't have uh, actually this exact value, uh, but we can, we can say that uh, it, it, it's a very high value from 8 to 90% of these 10 stones. Okay, Lydia Colonio, excellent. Octavio, excellent presentation. Could you identify fractures in the seal, for example, cooling joints? If yes, are filled with hydrothermal fluids to act as seals? So. So uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, we look for the, the thick seals to, to avoid this kind of problem because uh, we think that it, uh, if the igneous intrusions present this cooling joints cross-cutting the, the whole igneous body, uh, it would uh, make a, a path to the hydrocarbon to, mi to, to migrate through it. So. We consider the, the presence of uh, cooling joints as, as a risk to, to our to our ceiling and trap structure, but we don't have this uh, this kind of detail if they are uh, filled by hydrothermal fluids uh, to access seals. And this is a very uh, tricky uh, parameter because uh, uh, a cooling joint may be may work as uh, 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 fluid migration media, or they may be uh, they may be healed by uh, hydrothermal fluids, and this has to be considered by the time the hydrocarbon was uh, migrating and was uh, accumulated there. So we don't have this kind of uh, of uh, information, but we consider it uh, in our exploratory risk. Okay. La, la próxima es de Camilo Aristizábal. Congratulations, Diego, Fernando, and Enrique. Your results have shown to us how relevant this research is. 
It was mapped or characterized a specific dike swarm associated to the basin? Okay, good question. Uh, Camilo, it's, it's difficult to see this kind of feature in the basin. Uh, dikes are uh, pretty much uh, similar to the faults and the weakness zones. So if we assume to, uh, if, if of these dikes are the, the weakness zones or inside these weakness zones, uh, we can we can associate these features to the to the to 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 the folds and fractures. But uh, I would say that the basin is mainly covered by 2D, and any kind of association of a 3D geometry is really difficult to do. So that's why we need to to have a very uh, a, a good let's say, uh, ideas and models to understand it, in, and, and we are trying to do as, as best as possible. And to add to that, uh, we have uh, a very well uh, mapped dike swarm, uh, not in the basin, but in the Borborema uh, province, which is on the, the east side of the, of the basin. Uh, they are stated as uh, Cretaceous, but we don't have, uh, we may have this influence of this tax law in the basin, but as Kyogo has mentioned, we don't, it is not like uh, very well documented uh, in seismic lines or in maps. There are no very detailed maps of the basin until now. Uh Proxima de Fernando Freire. Congratulations for your very nice talk. Concerning temperatures, magma composition, hydrothermal composition between the Mosquito, Jurassic, and Sardini, Cretaceous. In other words, which is one which one caused more damage to the reservoir? A very good question, Fernando. Thank you. Uh, I've stressed this a lot in my master today. Uh, many authors have been studying this this kind of composition of these two uh, and trying to differentiate it uh, between them. And uh, it's really difficult because most of the authors are working with uh, outcrop samples, and when they try to separate the the the, and to try to differentiate it uh, using uh, titanium suites and, and, and uh, high titanium or low titanium, each one has your cutoff. So when I put my samples that came from the, the, the well samples on the subsurface, trying to fit with the cutoffs from the the, 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 the bibliography, uh, I couldn't see any any fitting with any uh, trend done before. So it's really difficult to say because, in summary, the composition is pretty similar. If we have two events, it's really similar, uh, both of them. Uh, that's why I, I am assuming so far that we have just one, the main one, so uh, that is dated. Uh, and uh, if we have the second one, that is the younger one, uh, will be uh, smaller and probably much more concentrated in a region uh, in part of the basin. Just about the damage, damage on the reservoir. I think that is the, the, the matter here, uh, we, we have two magmatic events really close, uh, similar to about composition and temperature of the, the, the emplacement, uh, basic magmatism. So we, we have, I think that we have to look more uh, to that question, uh, to the composition of the, the host rock, the, 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 the petrophysical and, uh, and, and the other uh, properties and characteristics from the source, conductivity and other things. I think that about the magmatism, we can just uh, think more about the difference between them when we look about the, the thickness, uh, 
and the the the, inter, the inter interaction if you have one or more seal intrusions uh, acting thermally in the reservoir. So I think that uh, here we have the same magmatic uh, uh, composition and event. Okay, Ole Ravel said perfect. Thanks for the answer, Diego. Y pareciera que esta es la última pregunta. Eh, Oscar Mancilla, do you have examples of intrusion working as reservoirs? Yes, we have, we have, but it's it's the difficulty and complexity of of the of the still to the reservoir itself. Uh, we have m more than uh, a few examples. Uh, one, we have one test formation test that produce uh, flames of uh, we could could get uh, gas in the surface, but we have just other example nowadays that we tried but we didn't uh, recover any gas. Even that we had uh, a much uh, great uh, uh, gas show up to the more than three thousand UDT. And we didn't recover it. So here we have these seals uh, that we have just one facies inside the seals that could be a, a reasonable uh, reservoir uh, because have some uh, vesicles and it's a facies that could be more of a reservoir. And it, it's where, where we have the most part of the, the gas shows is inside these facies and it's in the upper part of the seals. And the thicker seals. So it's many. It, the well, your question is, it's many. There are many uh, issues to to make uh, the intrusions as reservoir here in Panaiba Basin. It's really difficult. Luis, uh, just as a final comment, uh, we are we are working in a, in a, in, the, in the center of the depot center of the basin, and of course that. Uh, is a small part of the basin, as I showed you. It, 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 we have a lot to do. So, uh, as we have, uh, as an analog, an, an example in Argentina, and as we saw in the in our field trip last year, there are a lot of similar uh, 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 place to be uh, explored in the basin similar that we have in Argentina, like the Rio Grande Valley, and it's a possibility. I would say that there is a potential to have it. We just need to find, because the basin by itself is divided by sectors. And I, 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 I can say uh, for sure that we are in a small sector and we need to expand it. So uh, the, the emplacement, that's why we need to understand the emplacement. The emplacement by itself is very complex, and once we have it understood, uh, we can move on and we can uh, go to this kind of uh, different place. Okay. No tenemos más preguntas, solo agradecimientos de Ole Haber, también para Enrique y Fernando. Camilo Aristizabal um, y de Fran Muñoz. Eh, eh, apro eh, aprovecho para eh, agradecerle a todos, a los, a los presentadores y a los asistentes por el apoyo que recibimos, eh, por los comentarios que hizo Diogo, bueno, en, en uno de los planes que tenemos para el Conexo en el 2022 y dentro de este simposio es un viaje de campo a más largo, así que espero que, que, que se unan a, a nuestro viaje. Y bueno, este, recordarles a todos, agradecerles nuevamente a todos y, y los esperamos en la próxima charla, como está ahí en la pantalla, que es el, el 10 de diciembre. Y bueno, eh, muchas gracias. Muy obrigado por todo a todos. Muchas gracias, Luis. Gracias. 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 Gracias.